one thing that this video is, hopefully, is some quick tips and tricks to help someone who is trying to learn how to better give their dog a very simple basic haircut. What it is not is a super professional grooming lesson where I use words like angulation and tuck up and show you how to make perfect pillar legs. This is a basic one length all over body haircut. This video is about a body haircut, so I'm not gonna cover head, tail trim, potty area trim, feet trim. It is a simple shave down body from neck to tail. Please do notice how here and there, I will stretch the dog's skin where needed. So it is totally fine to pull on the skin, make it kind of taut, and then move your clippers along it. If the dog's skin is too sort of lumpy, bumpy, stretchy, sometimes you need to pull on it a bit before you can run your clippers over it. As far as prep work before giving a haircut, I highly recommend that you thoroughly brush out your dog then wash it, and then dry it. All of those things done thoroughly will make for a much, much better haircut and a smoother haircut and an easier haircut. A lot of times we're using a comb attachment on our mini clippers to do this. Also, they make these comb attachments for big corded clippers as well. They're slightly bigger size, but they're a very similar design. Here's the deal, if your regular comb will not go through the fur, then this comb attachment will not go through the fur either. So if you find yourself just getting stuck, it's usually because the fur itself is not combed out entirely. And I do recommend brushing and then testing the fur with the comb. Now there is a difference between the battery powered mini clippers and the corded bigger clippers if you're using a blade like this, and you see you want a fairly short haircut, here's how you want it to contact the dog's body, okay? Here's what I want you to remember. I don't want people doing this, right? You see how this flat surface needs to stay against the dog, okay? So no matter what bumps you're running over. Now you want to be careful because the 7 in particular in a lot of these blades, they're kind of pokey. And so if you're kind of coming in all the time, poking them all the time, poking, that's causing the dog discomfort and they're not going to cooperate as much with you. So you want to try to be smooth with it, right? But you can't be running it with the tip like this and having your blade out here. I need that blade in contact with the dog's body completely flat. All right. I also can't have it leaning out here. Now you're floating and you're varying the fur length longer if you're floating like this and shorter if you're floating like this and you're just gonna have bumps all over and it's not gonna be a smooth haircut so we're moving like that like that now if you're gonna lean at all I do tell people to kind of lean in that forward direction towards the tip so as far as just applying a little bit of pressure I do apply pressure a little bit towards the tip as I'm moving the blade but I do not actually lift and move. Same with this direction. I do not lift this way and move. Okay, both of those are incorrect. So, full contact with the dog's body as much as possible. Now, the most common lengths that groomers use for these big corded clippers are 10. 10 is the shortest we will do most dogs in. And you can see it's a real short, close blade. Sevens are our summer shave down. Five is a little bit longer than a seven. All of these have the millimeters written on them, six millimeters. The number four is a little bit longer than the five. That's an eight millimeter blade. And there's a three, I don't have it with me. And there's more in between and beyond, but those are our most common that we use. If you are going to buy a comb attachment set for your corded clippers, which is actually gonna be bigger because these are for my mini clippers. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than this, but it's gonna look real similar to this. If you are gonna buy that, then you're gonna want a 30 blade on this. The 30 blade goes under those comb attachments and that will do you very well if you have, let's say, a really big doodle 
that's got kind of long fluffy fur that would be a good tool to use for that I want to talk a little bit about the mini clippers with these comb attachments it's one of my favorites for simple haircuts on medium to small dogs and I can even use this on a bigger dog it's just that if if it is sticking sometimes the battery power tool is just not powerful enough but mostly it works for my purposes I just wanted to show you similarly to that other tool how we're going to use this against the dog's body that flat surface against the dog's body I don't want to see any of this all right you're going to be varying your length and you're going to wonder why the dog came out choppy I don't want to see any of this same thing same problem if you keep against the dog's skin like that all the way all the way around whatever you're doing you keep that contact like that okay without rocking back without rocking forward that's going to give you the proper length there we go of the haircut all right guys so here's a quick how-to demo that i did on beta good girl beta Do you really good? Okay guys, I'm going to use my dog Beta to demonstrate. I know that seems maybe silly because she has short hair, but you can see what I'm doing with the clippers without the hair actually getting in the way. So I'm not going to do an actual haircut, obviously. Today I'm going to use a one comb, which is the half inch length on these this wall clipper set with my mini clippers. These flaps, flappy places, if you have a, partic a dog with particularly stretchy skin, you can cut a dog with your clippers um, in a couple different places. The armpit flap is another one. You've got pretty wide teeth on this and you put it on your shortest cutter setting because it's an adjustable blade. And so it actually is possible, for example, to get that flap in between those teeth and then this is going to meet with, with the cutting blade. And so you can cut a dog that way if you're if you're going up in this direction and you get up in that flap and this is true with with any dog basically what that's what's great about using a short-haired dog as a demo is all all of these body features are pretty similar it's just that it's not hidden under fluffy curly fur another thing you need to watch out for especially with really small dogs seems like yorkies seem particularly prone to a collapsed trachea situation which can be caused by too tight around the neck, um, particularly kind of in the wrong location. And so if you've got your dog really restrained and it's just a neck thing like that, you, you just need to watch out for that kind of like, when you see that, that reverse sneezing stuff and they're struggling, you might need to consider maybe like a harness or sometimes we'll take whatever restraining noose we're using and on a collapsed trachea risk dog, we will often do like that, just under one armpit, and that way we still have the minor control, okay? Now, of course, it is better to have a dog on an elevated table. Now, this table isn't even ideal because this is kind of a mid-range table where, and do I need to sit, do I need to stand? But a table where you can stand to groom your dog is, in fact, better. And a table with a grooming arm where the noose actually could raise up above the dog is also better, but you can just do this. If you're doing this at home, you can just do it with a leash or some dogs don't even need a restraint, but the leash for me helps to make the suggestion to Beta to come up here and to stay here. And so since I've already talked to you about how to hold the clippers. I'm just going to go ahead and show you what direction to use them on the dog's body. We're going to do Beta's left side first. I'll just show you where I like to start. Come here, Beta. Up, up. Good girl. Come here. You can place your dog generally, depending on how cooperative your dog is. If your dog likes to sit down a lot, a lot of times they like to be on the table like that. And then they're trying to sit down because they don't want you to work back here. Okay, so what you can do is 
position their feet back here so that this part of their leg is perpendicular to the table. Just drag them back as often as you need and they're going to keep scooching them forward. And I like about there. And that just helps you to groom your dog. Beta's not really used to the clippers and if your dog is not used to that sound, this is a good way to do it. Good girl! You see how I didn't do anything with the actual haircut, I just made the sound and touched it to her body. And she, of course, is puzzled by this because she does not get haircuts. She's about two years old. We did good girl, you did good girl. But she learns that that's no biggie and she can feel that vibration. You did good girl. In order to not miss a spot, some dogs it's easier to sort of miss a spot. Like, did I do that area? So you end up going back over sections of your dog and wasting tons of time because you can't remember if you did that section or not. So I divide the dog mentally into overlapping shave down sections so that I can be more confident that I've done this section, that section, this section. So I always start on the top of the dog's back in the middle and I like to just do a nice stripe down the back Usually on the tail, I just sort of blend right off the top of the tail a little bit. I mean, it literally just in that direction, float off. But my point is, if I start in the middle, now I'm going to work on this side, okay? Then I know when I get to the other side, I can do the middle one more time and, and go in that direction. And I know that I haven't missed anything up top. So, my shave down section, I'll try turning this on just to give me my realistic... My first shave down section is from that middle line and behind this leg, this whole top chunk here, okay? And so I'm going to be going, now this grain is tricky because that's the other tip that you need to know is to always be going with the lay of the fur. But what's tricky about that is that on the dog's side here, you've got this fur going almost straight back, you've got this fur going almost straight back. You got this fur going at a 45 degree angle down and it all just sort of sweeps in these flowing directions. Well, for the most part, you want to follow those directions. Now I'm mostly gonna come off that flap perpendicular to the flap, okay? And when I do from here to about here, I'm, I'm good, okay? Now I, I wanna tell you what not to do here. Do not go straight down right here, all right? Because you're gonna get funny clipper lines right here where this fur is actually going this way, all right? So, good girl. This way, this way, mostly sideways here. Starting to get away with this downward angle here, okay? And I need to kind of dig into that dip a little bit with my clippers in order to keep that against the dog's skin. All right. Now what we're gonna do is, we've got a couple ways. There's gonna be fur hanging down here from the inside. And part of that is going to be approached by when we do the potty area down here, which a lot of times we can access by lifting this leg right here. And I also like to, from this side, get the inside of this leg. All right. You don't have to go all the way up in the belly yet because the belly and the potty area is like a different thing. All right, the whole inside of the leg, don't miss a spot. And you can even come down a little bit here. Now we're gonna get this leg in a minute because that's a different section in my mind that I have. But like I said, as long as I'm here, I like to do the inside of that. When I'm on the other side, I'm gonna do the inside of this leg. All right, let's talk about this section up here. Good girl. Mostly downward right here, right? Still going with the grain. But did you know right here, this armpit can be tricky. So what I want you to do is stretch this skin back and you can take your clippers straight back like that. Right here. I'm still conscious of flaps going on the back of the elbow here, but I can also stretch some of this. I can stretch some of this armpit out 
and take my clippers down like this. Okay. And then let it let it snap back into place. Take my clippers here. So that's going to give you more thorough here. And if you're trying to really get in that armpit, you can pull this. Please pay attention to the dog's range of motion. So I'm not yanking this leg sideways as far as I can, cranking it up, because it doesn't go that way. So if I pull it a little bit forward, I can give myself access to some of this armpit, and I can scoop some of that out. Now the other thing I like to do with my mini clippers is use the middle setting, which is a 15, and do a little bit of skimming, okay? Now that's a skill that takes a little bit of time to learn, but if there's something that this isn't working with, you might need to dig a little, you know, dig is a term that I use, it's not actually touching the dog's skin, but you might need to dig a little deeper and come in a couple angles with these mini clippers. Same thing with the belly under here. Good girl. I know. Good girl. And the other thing you can do is pick a shorter comb attachment for a place that you need to get shorter that is sort of hidden because if the haircut length is this, you don't want to use this anywhere that's visible. But if it's hidden, that short comb can give you a little bit of protection. But again, you have to make sure, because these teeth are so wide, you have to make sure that you don't get any flaps because it's a short distance between those wide teeth to the actual cutting blade. So you don't want to grab a flap anywhere, okay? All right, now moving on. Similarly to how I chose my middle line on the back so that when I get to the other side, I know that I don't have to come across the other side of the dog. I always have the middle line done for sure twice. Same thing on the tummy, middle line here, okay? Come here, baby. Good girl. All right, so if this dog had long hair, I'd be doing this. Right up the middle here, okay? And then I'd come. I'm being careful on this funny flappy skin here. Just being conscious of that, okay? And I like to stop right about there because we'll deal with tummy later and privates later, okay? Right now I'm just doing the body shave down. So, so far I've done this section and a little bit of this inside stuff and a little bit down. I still need to do this back leg, right? is an imaginary shave down but if I need to do the front of this chest again middle and I'm gonna scooch over and we'll show you how I get in here because there's a lot of funny stuff going on see I scooch this arm a little bit up I can come down right here and back right there and I can come up under this arm okay and come around come down. You still want to be conscious of going with the lay of the fur for the most part. Here's a place where you can accidentally go backwards and now you're moving against the grain and you might make something look choppy or short when you really should keep going with the grain over here. Okay? So don't take this back here and go against the grain up here. All right? You're going with the grain on this leg and getting under that armpit and getting the top of this leg, right? With the grain, with the grain and then back behind here with the grain again. All right, in here, because I'm on this side, I can go across and get some of that because you're going to have all kind of fuzzy, choppy stuff going on under here. Good girl. Good girl. You're doing great. Let's say we lift this leg and under here. And now I'll go across and get the inside of this one as well. So you see that anytime I lift one leg, I also like to work on the other leg. Go down. I divide up this leg into three sections. The top, the sort of bottom, and then the foot, okay? Don't let yourself get frustrated trying to get this whole leg all at once because it's hard enough to get that column shape or just simply even all the way around. So we're gonna 
maintain our sanity by dividing this into sections and approaching each one separately. So it's easy to get the, the top part of this leg while the dog is still standing. It depends on how big or small the dog is. Beta's a medium size, she's about 55 pounds. So she's a little bit easier to get more of while she is actually standing without actually even picking up her foot. But the shorter the dog and the smaller the dog, the sooner you're gonna have to pick up their foot to get this. Now, the top part, I'm really just considering above this elbow, okay? What you need to do is know that you're working with a square on a circle, okay? One way to divide it is eight swipes, okay? And what I mean is there would be four. There would be the top and the bottom and the side and the side. That would be four and then a section in between each. So four more would make eight, right? An angle, an angle, an angle, an angle. That's one way. Or you could consider 12 if you want to be even more thorough and consider it like the numbers on a clock. So we'll do 12 o'clock, we'll do 1 o'clock, we'll do 2 o'clock. On the very side, that would be the 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. But you have to have a little bit of patience and work your way around this pillar with your straight line. Good girl. All right, so you've worked your way around the pillar up here. Now let's work our way down here. Here's a good way, a lot of times, especially if your dog wants to pull their leg back. Now she's being pretty cooperative, which is great. But if the dog wants to pull their leg back, you want to grab behind this elbow here so that they can't do that. And again, I'm not going way up here sideways. All right, I'm considering her range of motion, so we're coming a little bit forward. And I don't even need to lift all that high. So, this is an overlapping section, meaning I just did down to this elbow, so for this section, I'm gonna start above this elbow, and again, that helps me not to miss a spot. I'm gonna go ahead down to the foot and work my way around. This is a tricky little bump, so a lot of times, you might need to kinda scoop under there like that. And we'll come back and fix that up with our mini clippers later. But you see how I'm working my way around both ways and just make sure that you get all 360 degrees around, including in here, okay? Now that I've done that section, I'm gonna do the bottom of her foot. And what sometimes you just like to brace behind that foot to give yourself something to press against and just get the rest of that foot, all right? Now I'm gonna do a separate video on pads and scissoring feet. So that's not gonna be included in this video. Now, this leg's pretty much gonna be the same thing. I'm not gonna demonstrate this half of the dog. It's just gonna make for too long of a video. It's all kind of the same stuff, okay? But I do wanna show you my neck section. So I consider, with my overlapping sections, a small, about two inch wide collar section all the way around and then a lower neck section as well. So what I like to do, this way I don't even, when I do this, I don't even have to remove their restraint. So what I like to do is loosen the restraint and drop it down so it's still on the dog and do the neck. And again, to make sure you don't miss a spot, start in the middle, work your way, and then you can either work your way back up and you know right where to end or you can start in the middle and work your way down the other way. Good girl, Beta. The, I like to do right where the collar lands, okay? Because I'm gonna work on the head separately and that's another separate video we'll go over another day. So, I come in here. I have made it to the middle. Now that this neck section is done, it's about a two inch, what I call the collar section, okay? Where a collar would sit. I can put my restraint back where I like to have it, which is right up where the collar would sit. All right, right behind the base of the dog's skull. Now I can do my lower neck section, which is quite a bit wider, just depending on the dog, it goes to the dog's shoulder blades, and it dips down to the chest here. 
And that's another one of my overlapping sections, so I know I won't miss a spot. I like to go back beyond the shoulder blades because I know I've already done all of this back here, okay? So I'll just make sure my sections overlap. Good girl. Good girl. that section. Now the one thing we didn't cover was this back leg, so let's talk about that. The rest of this back leg down here, okay? Good girl. Now if you're having a dog that uh, it will not leave a foot down for you, they're trying to get it uh, away from you, one little thing that might work, doesn't work with every dog, good girl, is to lift up the other foot while you work on this one. Um, it does mean that you have to spare a hand, <laughs> but if I want that foot to stay on the table, Usually this will work. Not always, but usually. Good girl. On this front section, that can be kind of tricky to get right here. So, you can take your clippers pretty much forward right there because we're down below that flap, because it's not so much of a flap, but you do have to be careful. So I can go direct forward here and work my way around like this, okay? And what you want to do then is stretch this around and some of that fur from the inside of the leg is going to reveal itself up front here. And you can just go straight down again. Okay? And get two swipes there. And then release it back. And when we're on the other side, when I'm already doing this section, that's when I like to come in here and get the inside of this leg, okay? And that's how we would get all the way around the front of this leg here. This funny little curve right here, Beta is a little bit big for this, but most dogs that are her size or smaller, definitely the small ones, you can grab this leg here, and if you squeeze, you see how her foot is straightening out? She actually can't bend it when I squeeze here. All right, let me show you that over here. Good girl. And hers is just big enough that it's kind of hard to do with only one hand. But when I squeeze right here, she can no longer bend this. Because when she bends it, it makes that curve much more difficult to access. So, when I squeeze it, now I can run this down. And I still have to follow that curve, but it is less curved. <laughs> and more accessible. All right, you with me? Good girl. Good girl. Very good. And it can be, you can tell by her behavior there, it's a little uncomfortable. They don't like being controlled in that way, but it is not painful for them, okay? Now, unless you've got a dog who's sort of arthritic or has some other mobility issues, dogs can absolutely handle that little squeeze. All right? Now you wanna do your slow rotation again. See, I, I almost always start with that front, that noon, and then I scooch my way over to one o'clock, two o'clock, the side is three o'clock, and I even like to do down here while I'm in this position. Good girl. But I can also just hold it more loosely. Back here, I'm just focusing on that section right there. And again, when you do focus on that section, you wanna work your way as far around as you can in little steps because you're using a square, a flat square, to try to make a round pillar, okay? So that's why we just do so many baby steps all the way around. Oh, you're a good girl. You're doing so good. I know, it's terrible. You don't get groomed. Oh, you're a good girl. Again, I like to divide this leg in my mental sections, and there's really only three, okay? I make sure the top is completely done with the grain and when I'm back here at the booty I do a similar thing okay, where I make sure that I inch my way a little this way and I inch my way a little that way okay and that way I know that I've gotten around as good as I can and you kind of have to follow this funny little curve okay and if you're having trouble there's this tendon back here, and if you're having trouble getting the fur, you can actually push that flap behind the tendon. Just push it momentarily while you run your clippers right there. 
carefully. And that's it. And same on the other side. I can push it this way and run my clippers on the other side. Now, I like to go off of this thing and then when you come down, that's one of that's one of your overlap moments where I go beyond it here and I start above it here when I go down. So coming from above, I go beyond it. Good girl. And when I'm doing below, I start above it. I know, I know. Okay. So you gotta, see how I got to scooch her legs back like that to encourage that she does not sit down for me. Now we already talked about this section here. For the most part with that squeeze, you can get that section start. It's an overlapping, so start above that ankle. And hopefully last time when you did this section, you went a little below it, right? It's an overlapping section there. So we'll get this whole bottom all the way around from here to the foot. And when it's time for me to do the foot, I put a little pressure behind so that I can make sure I don't miss anything all the way around on the tiny little foot there. All right, and again, the bottom of the pads I like to do with my very short 40, take the clipper off, but that's gonna make for a different video, okay? Good girl. And same with scissoring the feet to make them look nice and neat. And I lost her. Good girl, yes. Open, baby. Up, up. Come on, good girl. Come on. So guys, I showed you this half of Beta's body. That half's gonna essentially be the same. S some videos that I'm going to do separately, I assure you, are how to scissor like a round, you know, simple teddy bear head, how to approach the privates, and oh, how to work on the feet, the paw pads, and the scissoring the feet. Now when you do your body shave down the last thing i want to mention is that it almost always looks better after a little scissor trim now scissoring is a whole nother grooming skill and so don't feel bad if you feel very uncomfortable with it it's a difficult thing to get comfortable with and it's a difficult thing to practice without just practicing on a real dog i'll point out real quick for the purposes of this video which areas the, the most common areas that a little snip snip will usually kind of tie the whole groom together that the clippers almost always miss and it's easier to just snip off and that's going to be Bender, good boy that's going to be behind this elbow right here I almost always have a little funny funky thing sticking out and right here um, some funky hairs are almost always sticking out. This sort of back elbow thing back here, there's almost always a little something right there. And right here where the tail is a little bit in the way, a lot of times there's some little transitions to scissor right there. Now, there's a million places you can find little imperfections and go down all the legs and sort of, you know, fix them up a bit. But for a simple at-home haircut, if you washed the hair, brushed it out thoroughly, dried it thoroughly, and you keep your clippers against the dog's body properly at every area, it will make overall for a relatively smooth haircut that doesn't need as much scissoring in general. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Good Dog Grooming, and my name's Colleen. I hope you'll consider subscribing, and I hope you'll come back for more. Thanks a lot.